Hello everyone, Kevin Stevens here with GiveMeTheGeek.com and today we're going to talk about backing up our true NAS free NAS. Uh, it's simpler than you would think. If you have access to Amazon S3, Wasabi, Backblaze, any of these things, and many, many more, you can back up your true NAS directly to the cloud so that all those files that you have on there, all those backups you may have on there, are backed up off-site and you're safe. Let's get started. Here we go. First off, here we go. Whoop, there's my Wasabi. And what you're seeing right here is the access keys. And um, they're gonna be blurred out a little bit here, but basically this is what you're gonna need for accessing your Amazon, your, your Wasabi buckets. So you'll need a key and a secret, which is in, your, in this spot in your account. Okay, so first off, now let's go over here to our TrueNAS. Here is my TrueNAS box that I, you guys have seen before that we love to play with. So one of the things we're going to need to do here is we need to set up the cloud credentials that are from Wasabi, okay? So what we need to do is go down here to System, scroll on down, and you're going to have cloud credentials okay so this is where you're going to add your cloud credentials click on the add button um let me, let me make this a little bit bigger for everyone all right so first thing you're going to notice is providers down here so if you drop down in that list you're going to see that you have as i was saying earlier amazon s3 that's the big name everybody is compatible with them Backblaze, excellent source for, for reliable, lower cost data storage in the cloud. Box, Dropbox, FTP, good old reliable FTP. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Google Cloud Storage, Google Drive, just plain old HTTP. Uh, I'm not sure what this is and this one, but Azure Blob Storage. So you've got all of the big names, uh, Amazon, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud that you can drop these all into. Not only that, but not only do you, do you have those options for their main cloud products, but some of their consumer products like Google Drive and OneDrive, you can access and use it for backup too. So if you're you're rocking a uh, Office 365 cloud account, and that usually comes with one terabyte of OneDrive storage, and you have less than one terabyte of storage on your local TrueNAS, you could back it up to there. Interesting thought, SFTP. So if you got a Linux box and you just wanna straight up just copy it all over there, there you go, FTP, SFTP, WebDAV. I don't know what Yandex is and some of these other ones, but, but as you can tell, there are definitely options out there, right? What we're going to do is use Wasabi. Now, if you noticed in this list, you don't see Wasabi. Hmm. So what does that mean? <laughs> don't worry. Wasabi is S3 compatible. So basically, we just pick S3. And you go up here and you, you put in Wasabi. Okay, now here's where we get those secrets and those keys we had before. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and drop mine in there. Okay. You just put a number in here, um, 10,000. You can take a look at the help, and this is where I got the 10,000. Just because that's Amazon S3's specification, so you're all good. Now, here's where it's going to be different. Oh, there's a space at the end. 
Got to make sure you don't have those spaces. Here's where we're going to deviate from you, what you would do if you were just using S3. We're going to check this little box. Bam! Oh, take a look at that. So now we can actually go ahead and put in the uh, a different endpoint. So by the way, this also works if, say, like you had a min IO bucket out there and you wanted to put uh, that as your backup location. OK, so let's just do that. I'm going to copy this over here. Basically, you're going to put S3 Wasabi. Uh, OK, so in my particular case, when I go over to my buckets, I have them all in East 1. OK. So that's what we're going to use. Now, just so you know, because I'm using East 1, that is kind of like the default one. And so I can just use this as my endpoint. Now, if you were going to use one of the other ones, uh, like East 2, Central, West, um, you, can, you can take a look. And here's an article, um, basically, that gives you the the URL locations, and this is this is where you see that this base one is just the plain S three, actually aliases to the East one, and so if you're putting anything in East one, then you can use the the default one. But if you want to use East two, Central, West, Central one, EU, so this is EU. Um, if you're in Tokyo. Um, so pick a region when you make your buckets, you want to pick a region that's near you because it's just going to make your life easier. Um, <clears throat> I happen to be in central area, but all my buckets and stuff are set up. So it's close enough for me for what I'm, I'm interested in. Okay. Now, then you're going to put the region. Okay. So mine is us. And if you go back to that, article I just showed you wherever I did that drop this in here so you'll see how they're these are your options now those options are also going to be what you see in your buckets when you create them so if we're going to go to create a new bucket you're going to see these regions this is what you're going to want to choose one of these okay so choose one of those And we use choose we chose east one okay great so basically this is your credentials for your cloud provider and so once you have this those stored in your OneDrive or your OneDrive <laughs> in your TrueNAS then you are good to use those later so click on the verify credentials valid okay so there you go. But that's just step one. So now what we're going to do is figure out how we're going to back it up. Okay. So that is a cloud sync task. Okay. So we haven't talked about this much on our channel about tasks, but you have this tasks menu and one of them is cloud sync task. Okay. So let's go ahead and click OK or add my bad and talk about that for just a moment. So first of all, you're going to put a description, what it does, what the transfer mode is, credentials and where you're going to be copying and all these things here. So basically, you can think of this as just a scheduled task. And uh, so let's do that. Let's just go Wasabi. OK. And for direction, you've got push or pull. Well, if you think about it, we're going to push that data up, right? Got it. <laughs> copy. So you got sync, copy, move. Okay. So in the example we're going to use, we're going to just go ahead and use copy. Okay. And, and I've got notes over here in case you're wondering that I'm, I'm following um, just to make my life easier. Now, under the directory drop down, you want to figure out what you want to transfer, right? Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and do that real quick. What do we want to copy? Hmm. So I have lots of things here. 
I have the Stevenson Media. Uh, as you look, will be stuff that I have there that is probably what I want to back up. So let's just do that, right? Bam. Okay. So you'll see that that's all in there. And uh, it puts puts that directory. And basically, all you're just looking at is what directory, what you want to back up. Um, if you have multiple things, I think you can add more. So let me just click. Uh, no, must be for one cast. Okay. Um, you if you if you don't want to get a big swap, you, maybe you want multiple backup routines at different locations. Uh, so you don't want to back everything. You can just make another cloud test to do the other backup. Okay. Now. Cron job scheduling. So you want to pick basically on that. So if we take and drop this down, and luckily they have it set up to give you the basics. All right. So daily, weekly, monthly, custom. So if you use custom, then you can pick any kind of time frames that you want. Oh, an hour later, I missed saying that. Um, and so and it, it works the same way. Uh, do you format for cron jobs? So we're gonna do monthly backups, right? All right. Now, snapshots. Now, just go ahead and, and, and click on any one of these question marks. We'll give you updates, on a little bit more information. This is one of the reasons why I love TrueNAS so much is because they have taken the time, especially with their new interface, to add all these things like, oh, well, what does that mean? Well, sets a snapshot for data before pushing. Hmm, interesting. So something you may be interested in doing, follow symlinks. And it gives you a little extra information. Cron jobs, the cron, the cron time. It, you know, gives you, like I said, gives you a little bit of extra information. And here's selecting directory. So most of this stuff is very, very straightforward when it comes to when it comes to that. So if you have a script that you'd like to run before or after, then here's an option for you to do that. So you can put that in. So it's just like a lot of backup programs that you, you, you may or may not have used out there, but they give you pre and post th scripts that you can run to uh, uh, do options, do, do things after or before. And, and so like, for example, um, maybe you need to stop a service in order to get a good backup. So you could write a script that would stop that service. And then after the, the post script would restart that service backup. Just a, a, an example of where you might want to use that. So remote re encryption. So let's talk about this for just one second. So if you see right here, I click on this little question mark and it gives you more information. So we were doing what? Push. All right. So let's look at the push. Encrypt files before transferring. Store the encrypted files on the remote system. Files are encrypted using encryption password and encrypted salt virus. So the reason why I bring this up is that if you need or want to do a trust no one situation, and, and I highly recommend that, uh, to be honest, um, you can encrypt it on site, push it to your bucket and what's out there is an encrypted version. So even if someone gets access to your cloud bucket, they have to also have your encryption keys in order to access the data. So keep that in mind. It's very important. Um, for this particular case, I'm not going to worry about it because this is just a uh, um, just a demonstration. But if you check that box, you'll see you'll put your username and password in there, okay? And one of the nice things about that is you can do file encryption too. So um, what's important to know about the file encryption here, and uh, let, me, let me just read that real quick. So encryption, push, decryption, pull, file names, um, the original directories structure preserve a file name with the same name always has an encrypted, the same encrypted files. So basically what happens is you uh, will encrypt the file names that are stored up there. Why is this important? Well, I'll tell you one. Here's an example. And this, this bit me in the butt 
not too long ago. Um, I have a backup client that was using that is using emojis in their file names and and s3 buckets or or at least wasabi's buckets do not support that um file the utf8 or whatever so they don't support those emojis in, in the file names and so it wouldn't back up properly and i was like well wow, interesting so all i did uh is i went and i checked the little box that said encrypt file names file name encryption and so then basically that substitutes out for an encrypted file name and uh, all of a sudden the problem goes away so just a quick little trick about doing that stuff if you need that if you're using non-standard characters in your file names um, then that's something you you can do to make that problem go away okay so let's just look at transfers here um, so this is a simultaneous transfers um, and you can leave that blank because there's going to be a default bandwidth limit. And so here's, this is another thing that's important. If you are working with your internet, so here, here's why you want to pay attention to this. So Monday through Friday, eight to five, you are working and you, you don't want to, uh, uh, slow down the internet. So in the evening, you can set this up so that, it, that it's throttled in the evening and you don't have, you throttle during the day and full wide open on the evening. So that way, if your backups run over and take longer than, than your night schedule before they finish, that they can continue and not interfere with the person, the people's work schedule. Things to remember. Okay. So, all right. So you go in here, you select your credentials, you save, boom. All right. Okay. So now that you have everything set up, we got our name transferred, our credentials, the bucket picked, our location. We're going to do this monthly dry run. Boom. So now you'll see that it's doing a bunch of that stuff. Okay. So now we've done our dry run, everything went out successfully. Let's go ahead and hit submit. Now, it's gonna say status, not run since last boot. So you can go down here and you can do a dry run. You can do a run now, you can do a restore, edit, delete, okay? So let's just go ahead and kick that off for a run. And Cloud Sync has started. So now you will see that it says big fat running right there. Okay. And that's all there is to backing up your Prunas to Wasabi. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our tutorial on how to back up your TrueNAS to Wasabi. Just keep in mind that you can do this for uh, Amazon S3s, uh, Google Cloud, your OneDrive, your Google Drive, your uh, Azure storage, uh, Backblaze. So go ahead and check it out. FTP. If you make your own MinIO, you've got a buddy that uh, is uh, hosting a uh, S3 bucket on his own. You can back up to that too using that custom URL. So just just do that. Make sure you back up, back up to be safe. Remember, always practice a three, two, one plan for your backup. One copy, original copy, original data, a second local copy, and an offsite third copy. That's three, two, one. All right, thanks for joining me, and we'll see you next week.